Hi, boys and girls. As you can tell, I'm reading this on Thursday when we should have worn our Fifth Street School shirt. I hope you wore yours today as you did your work. Um, today, I'm going to continue reading our story, uh, which is Fantastic Mr. Fox. And we're reading chapter 13 today uh, and 14. And so let's find out what happens. All right. It says, dear, my dear Foxy, cried Badger, what in the world has happened to your tail? Don't talk about it, please, said Mr. Fox. It's a painful subject. Remember that they shot his tail off. Okay. They were digging the new tunnel and they dug on in silence. Badger was a great digger and the tunnel went forward at a terrific pace now that he was leading up, lending a paw. Soon they were crouching underneath yet another wooden floor. Mr. Fox grinned slyly, showing sharp white teeth. If I am not mistaken, my dear Badger, he said, we are now underneath the farm which belongs to that nasty little port pot belly dwarf that bunts. We are, in fact, directly underneath the most interesting part of that farm. Ducks and geese, cried the small foxes licking their lips. Juicy, tender ducks and big, fat geese. Exactly, said Mr. Fox. But how in the world can you know where we are? asked Badger. Mr. Fox grinned again, showing even more white teeth. Look, he said, I know my way around these farms blindfold. For me, it's just as easy below ground as it is above it. He reached high and pushed up one wooden floorboard, then another. He poked his head through the gap. Yes, he shouted, jumping up into the room above. I've done it again. I've hit it smack on the nose, right in the bullseye. Come and look. Okay, and so they're digging and they're underneath. Okay. Quickly, Badger and the three small foxes scrambled up after him. They stopped and stared. They stood and gaped. They were so overwhelmed they couldn't speak. For what they now saw was a kind of fox's dream, a badger's dream, a paradise for hungry animals. This, my dear old badger, proclaimed the fo Mr. Fox, is Bunce's mighty storehouse. All of his finest stuff is stored in here before he sends it off to market. Against all the four walls of the great room, stacked in cupboards and piled upon shelves, reaching from floor to ceiling, were thousands and thousands of the finest and fattest ducks and geese, plucked and ready for roasting. And up above, dangling from the rafters, there must have been at least a hundred smoked hams and 50 sides of bacon. Just feast your eyes on that, cried Mr. Fox, dancing up and down. What do you think of it, eh? Pretty good grub. Okay, so they come in and they see everything that's in there. Suddenly, as those springs had been released in their legs, the three hungry small foxes and the ravenously hungry badger sprang forward to grab the luscious food. So ravenous is like you're not just hungry, you're really, really hungry. Stop, ordered Mr. Fox. This is my party, so I shall do the choosing. The others fell back, licking their chops. Mr. Fox began growling around the storehouse. I'm sorry, prowling around the storehouse, examining the glorious display with an expert eye. A thread of saliva slid down one side of his jaw and hung suspended in midair, then snapped. We mustn't overdo it, he said. Mustn't give the game away. Mustn't let them know what we've been up to. We must be neat and tidy and take a few, just a few of the choicest morsels. So to start with, with, we shall have four plump young ducks, and he took them from the shelf. Oh, how lovely and fat they are. No wonder Bunce got, gets a special price for them in the market. All right, Badger, lend me a hand to get them down. The, you children can help as well. There we, we go. Goodness me, look how your mouths are watering. 
And now, I think we had better have a few geese. Three will be quite enough. We'll take the biggest. Oh my, oh my, you'll never see finer geese than these in a king's kitchen. Gently does it. That's the way. And what about a couple of nice smoked hams? I adore smoked ham, don't you, Badger? Fetch me that step ladder, will you please? Mr. Fox climbed up the ladder and handed down three magnificent hams. And do you like bacon, Badger? I'm mad about bacon. That means, is he mad? No, it means he really likes it, cried Badger, dancing with excitement. Let's have a side of bacon. That one up, that big one up there. And carrots, Dad, said the smallest of the three small foxes. We must take some of those carrots. Don't be a twerp, said Mr. Fox. You know we never eat things like that. It's not for us, Dad. It's for the rabbits. They only eat vegetables. My goodness me, you're right, cried Mr. Fox. What a thoughtful little fellow you are. Take 10 bunches of carrots. Soon all this lovely loot, that means like stuff that they've gotten, was lying in a neat heap upon the floor. The small foxes crouched close with their noses twitching, their eyes shining like stars. And now, said Mr. Fox, we shall have to borrow from our friend Bunce two of these useful push carts over in the corner. He and Badger fetched, that means they got, the push carts and the ducks and geese and the hams and bacon were loaded onto them. Quickly, the push carts were lowered through the hole in the floor. The animals slid down after them. Back in the tunnel, Mr. Fox again pulled the floorboards very carefully into place so that no one could see they had been moved. My darlings, he said, pointing to two of the three small foxes, Take a cart each and run back as fast as you can to your mother. Give her my love and tell her we are having guests for dinner. The badgers, the moles, the rabbits, and the weasels. Tell her it must be a truly great feast. And tell her the rest of us will be home as soon as we've done one more little job. Yes, Dad. Right away, Dad, they answered, and they grabbed a trolley each and went rushing off down the tunnel. So this is a time when we can predict. Remember when we predict something, we think, what do we think is gonna happen? So where else do you think he might go? What's gonna be his next place that he's gonna stop? So this is kind of a longer chapter, so I'm just gonna stop there for today. And then you can hopefully continue to read to find out what happens at the end of our story.